Zelda in Fulte Podcast. Bum, 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 bum. Hey everybody, welcome to the Zelda Informer Podcast. We've got a lot of wonderful E3 stuff to talk about this week, as well as some news and fan topics. But before all that, here's a brief look at some of the news that happened this past week. We got a ton more info on the lore of Triforce Heroes and more about the game itself. In other Nintendo news, Fire Emblem If has been released in Japan, and the initial Famitsu reviews have given it 9 out of 10 score. The game has set for a 2016 release in the West under the name Fire Emblem Fates. In other gaming news, the reviews are in this week as Arkham Knight stepped out of the shadows. Complaints of a terrible PC port as well as some other issues made this game's mixed reviews seem somewhat kind. Also, E3 winner Bethesda said they're not so sure about doing another E3 conference next year. And according to Shenmue 3's creator, while Sony is part of the development team for the new game, the company will not be receiving any of the money earned through their newest Kickstarter. And if you're like me and you want to follow up for Pip-Boy Edition, good news for those of you who have the money. There may be an updated stock available for pre-order on Amazon. Sadly for me, I don't have $100. And in movie news, Star Trek 3 has begun filming in Canada with some of the cast members posting photos on various social media. Looks cool, but I still prefer Star Wars. Thank you to Brandon and company for that opening theme song, and thank you to everyone who emailed your, in your fan topics. If you have any of your own, or a theme song, or even some cover you'd like us to use, please send this to us at zeldainformerpodcast at gmail.com. Once again, that's zeldainformerpodcast at gmail.com. I am your host, as always, Adam. For some reason, they haven't fired me yet, even after last week. And this week, I'm joined by... Hi. Welcome to week two of uh, Bad Metroid Game ex- uh, Existence. I'm Caleb. <laughs> Uh, that's all I. That's all I have to talk about. Hi, I'm Al, and I come from the land of Down Under. Uh, no, you don't. You come from Belgium. It's it's. Belgium okay. is down down under. It's in the north. I can dream, Adam. Get a globe. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just Zian. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Al. Yes. Can I talk to you for a second? Okay. We're doing a podcast, right? Be a man, all right? Thank you. I'm tired of this. Listen to your mother. Thank you, Caleb. What's happening right now? <laughs> Mommy and Daddy are speaking to Al. Okay. <laughs> and last but not least, and I'm sorry for interrupting you. It's okay. I'm Zeon. I'm a news writer and editorial writer for Zelda Informer. <laughs> Woo! Yay. Oh, wow. And you also yeah. did our cinematography last week for E3. Yeah, I did all the cool videos that you probably watched that weren't very cinematography, but it's, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Short of pause. Uh, so, what have you guys been playing recently? Absolutely uh, nothing, because exams. Really? Oh, that's that's true. I, yeah, I bought you... Splatoon, and I've been wanting to play it so badly. Yeah, you just you just got on vacation, right? Yeah, like yesterday. Oh my god! Congratulations for being free. Thank you. I uh, <clears throat> I picked up the Splatoon as well, and I I played it a lot, like the first two days, and then I haven't touched it since, and I want to. But of course, just being super busy doesn't give you the time to play games as much as I would like to. So that's true. That's true. Yeah, um, but I'm also playing Story of Seasons off and on on 3DS, which I like a lot. Um, I don't know what that is. It's uh, it's I I could be wrong, but I believe it's made by the original creators of Harvest Moon because it, it's very very similar. Um, so uh, so it I mean it basically is Harvest Moon just with a, a name change. Um, it's, oh, okay. It's really good. Um, Do you think it was better than the one we played at E3? Um. Because we played the the new one that's supposed to be coming out, or I, uh, it already come out. God, yes, it's it's much better than that. But that also isn't out yet, so I I guess like we right, can't judge it still, too hard. Yeah. But I I do like Story of Seasons is very true to the original Harvest Moon feel from like the sixty four PlayStation one era. So so yeah, I, I like I like it a lot. Um, I was and, never I never played a lot of Harvest Moon, but I always kind of wanted to get into it. I was just like. It seemed like weird. Sure, I, I mean, don't know what it was. It's, I mean, it's strange. Like, you, why would you think that you'd have fun farming and uh, r- milking a cow and 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 having chickens and stuff? But you do. It's it's a lot of. It, it just is fun. Um, and the funny uh, thing is, I played Harvest Moon DS, and I never really had fun doing it. Well, I just got so damn addicted to it. <laughs> That's me with every video game I've ever played. <laughs> well, yeah, oh my it, God. It, it it feels like it feels very like grindy and like MMO like where you want to incredibly. Like, yeah, it's like you... breathing. I don't enjoy it. I just have to do it now forever. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. once you once you start Harvest Moon, that's that's, Why did that's I do how this? it is. <laughs> what have I begun, Caleb? What have you been Can playing recently to try and get your mind off of things that we know are bothering is you? Out there. Um, <laughs> I. <laughs> I think honestly, the only game I've played recently is Splatoon. Are you a kid or squid? I'm a squid. 
Oh, okay. I just want to make sure. What what level are you, Caleb? Don't be shy. Uh, nine, I think. Nice. I think I'm. Damn, I'm eleven. Eight. Eleven or twelve? Yeah. I think I think I'm twelve. I'm gonna go with twelve. I don't own it because I don't play I don't games know. much anymore. I just play Splatoon now. It seems to I be the, the also trend. Bought a... This is all I need now. I also bought a ton of games in the <laughs> Steam Summer Sale. I just like to imagine uh, Caleb is like in his room and he looks over at this like giant thing of games, like like a tower of just like game cases, and he just like pushes it all over and just puts Splatoon <laughs> in their place. And he's like, "This is all I need now." No, let me actually tell you what happens. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> my collection, my TV sits on top of my collection in a case. Mm-hmm. Splatoon is on top of my TV by itself. <laughs> you get special placing. It's like a, it's like the food pyramid with Splatoon on top. <laughs> it's not a bad pyramid. No, it's not. Not a bad pyramid at all. I really want to get into Splatoon. I, I've seen like the different classes and everything, and I feel like there's like if Nintendo really didn't try to stifle it too much, which it feels like they do more than they they support it. I feel like the um the competitive elements of that game could make it like very long lasting and make it a huge like like a long term success. I just want it to become an esport like League of Legends. I, or I think something. it could. Well, uh, it... well, speaking of which, if you guys were interested in that a uh, the split Splatfest, I think it was called. Uh, it's like that competition where you have different te- you have two different sides and they're playing the whole game. I guess. Um, the um, North American one was delayed after they found some bugs in the Japanese one, but. Good news, it's going to be happening on July 4th in North America. So get your guns ready and be ready to fight for your side, which is either cats or dogs. If you so. have no friends to spend the 4th of July with, of course. Woof, woof. Because. But I'm already having an issue deciding fireworks. between a kid and a squid. Why do I have to decide between the dog and a cat, too? Just roll a dice. Because that's that. Can I be like a squid cat? <laughs> squid you can, cat. You can be whatever you want to be, really. Squat. Squats. See, that's oh the God. answer I wanted. A squat? Thanks, Mom. Glad I could help out. I've always loved you. So, yeah, games that I've been play- playing recently, since, you know, I didn't get to say mine. Uh, like Al, I foolishly went on Steam during the summer sale, and oh, my wallet so. is empty now. Yes, I know the feeling. And I bought a bunch of games. Okay. And I have literally been playing, like, two or three games over the past week, nonstop since I got back from E3. I think it's like partly an effect from uh, being at E3. By the way, E3 is great if you like games and stuff. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you want to go, ever, if you like in games your life. And stuff? Wow. But like... This gaming convention is really great if you like games. Yeah, that, that surprises me. I don't... I've seen people there that don't play games. Oh yeah, oh, it's, it's, it's flooded with people that don't play games. Yeah, Zeon. We just saw so many people just like... As the I literally had him. Um, like... I literally had a guy say, "Hey, do you play games?" And he was serious. He was like sitting next to me when I was eating lunch. It's insane. But sorry, go continue. A lot of people are there that never play games in their entire lives because it's it's an entertainment expo. It's not just games, but it's mostly games. I mean, and it really is meant for you know the it's it's for for business people and uh, right and and writers and uh, and the and press like and stuff. Fifty percent so. of those people just make stuff and they don't actually play anything. Do they not understand that E3 or stands investors. for video games? Investors as well. <laughs> video game, video game, video festival. game conference. Yeah. Obviously, video games. VVC. That's what it really means. Um, but yeah, I think it was a sort of a like a subconscious effect of like being at E3 and waiting in lines and lines and like. And I was lucky. I had a media pass, which means you kind of get to skip some lines and you get to like get like quicker access to things because we actually have to write about these things and tell you all about it like so i'm like i'm there for like everyone here that's listening to this podcast as opposed to just for me and uh if you go there without a press pass or anything you're gonna be waiting in hours and hours of lines and even if you go with a media pass if you're not like one of the top 10 companies that has like media people you're pretty much gonna be waiting in hours and hours of lines anyway same thing at gamescom you know yeah yeah it's really bad and so like i think as a like a side effect like while i was playing games i'm like Thinking, if I stop playing this game, then I have to wait in hours of lines for another game, so I have to just play this as much as possible. And I ended up blogging <laughs> right. like 600 hours or 600 minutes of gameplay into like uh, the past week. It was just gross. I was at Gamescom in the year that Watch Dogs was not out yet, but it was like completely overhyped. Oh, um, yeah, I remember that. And there was a line that went through the entire hole. Oh, my God. Just to play Watch Dogs. Yeah, I, I think the uh the, the, the line for Halo Five Guardians was like two hours. Yeah. 
just to play the demo. Like it's the ridiculous. only way that oh. you could play the demo is waiting that line. The razor and booth. I, the razor booth I, at Gamescom was five hours to wait. Oh my god! And I was gonna say the Mirror's Edge booth was about two hours because I remember getting. I had to jump out of that one for you know our Nintendo booth tour. And that, yeah. that was about two hours, and I was in that one for like an hour, so that sucked. I'm sorry about I, that, by the oh, way. Oh, no, dude, it's fine. It's fine. We but got to play uh, Yokai Watch, which yeah. wasn't on the show floor. Yeah, yeah. Which that, is really that weird. Was cool. I was, I was really surprised because I played that game, and I thought, like, this should just be on the show floor. Like, I was, why, I, I'm surprised no one was going around with, like, a demo of it. Cause it maybe it, it was, what, the, maybe I, it was last minute. Like, they just decided to. I guess, to... I guess. But, like, even then, they, they still have people walking around with different handhelds. Like, true. they have, very true. Just, like, employees walking around to let people play games while they're waiting in lines and stuff and i thought this would be perfect that's true um just i man e3 it was a weird experience i've it was I so came good home... it was so good <laughs> <laughs> we got so much like cool like collectibles I actually uh there's a pin set at e3 that you had to wait in like several lines for i'm sorry that i'm we're spending so much time talking about our experiences at e3 i just feel like i want to talk about that game scum yeah. promise i'll get to it I didn't go to Gamescom. <laughs> I, uh, you did. Um, I'm going again but, this year. Yay. Yeah, that's going to be cool. When is that again? August. Are Beginning you of August. So, yeah, I'm really excited. Good to hear. Good to hear. Um, but with E3, there was like this uh, There was this pin set that you, if you played all the games at the Mario area, you could get like this eight like collectible pin set. Uh, I think Best Buy is giving seven of them away. Uh, with two pre-orders and purchases of like the new Nintendo games, and I was one of the few people that got all eight, and that was pretty cool. Yeah. So I pretty much spent most of my time at E3 at the Nintendo. You should area. like totally keep those for like twenty years and then sell them on eBay for like or I just ten thousand euros. Twenty billion dollars. Oh man. <laughs> one billion dollars. A bit too much money. Uh, speaking of money, uh, if. Usually we like to recommend games on here, and before we get into the topics, uh, get this. There's a if you like first person shooters, um, there is a good one on Steam called Verdun, which is a World War One shooter. Verdun, has a... Adam Verdun. Do you not speak the French? I speak a little bit of French. Actually, I think I didn't finish it in high school. <laughs> I think I did like one year of it, and I didn't even finish it. I speak zero reminder, French. I live in Belgium. <laughs> But yeah, it's a it's a good game. It's like twenty bucks, twenty three dollars right now. Uh, great game, historically accurate. It feels good. It plays well. I don't even like first person shooters, but I love this game. Uh, let's get into the topics from this week. So we got more information about Triforce Heroes, which I'm very happy about. Mm-hmm. By the way, I still think it should have been called Triforce Trio. Uh, we actually got some information about the lore from a uh, interview with Kotaku. Is it about a boy named Link that does it does stuff? Actually, no. It's about a king who knows about a prophecy about three bo- about these three people that whoa, have whoa, whoa. like Adam, Adam. sideburns. What? What? What are you saying? I, I didn't what? read that. You didn't read that? It was on our site. <laughs> but I wrote an editorial about Triforce Heroes. What? what did you? Which one did you write? <laughs> Everything we know about Triforce Heroes. <laughs> well, there was one published on <laughs> June twenty fourth by Nathaniel Rumpeljank, which is our editor in chief. And it says, uh, Kotaku got a chance to talk to the game's director, Hiroshima Sh- Shitaka, that asked him a very, that asked him that very question. Why do three different people all look like Link? That's a pretty deep question, he, he said, laughing. The king is a firm believer in this legend, the prophecy that exists within their kingdom of the three heroes that come together to form a totem. The king understands from this legend that describes the true hero as someone with these long sideburns and this particular hairstyle and these long ears. So the king from amongst these people is able to find the correct ones. The people who meet his conditions are the true heroes. So that's what I'm referring to, Al. Okay. Yeah. But I wrote everything. But I wrote everything. No. <laughs> it's like, no, I just read you something that you didn't write. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Apparently you didn't, Al. Apparently you didn't. Yeah, okay, sorry. I was studying for my life. I'm getting in. I'm enjoying this. Like, it just didn't mean you have to be a jerk about it. Be like, oh, I'm sorry, Adam. I am the prolific expert on Triforce Heroes. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I did write an editorial, so <laughs> that obviously is proof. I mean, there was there was a good amount of information we knew, um, and a lot of the stuff that we do know, we thought we knew, still stands so far. Uh, like the uh, the fact that there's no overworld. Yeah. Which, yeah, which kind of yeah. sucks because I knew a lot of people were asking about that, but it, it makes sense in a game that you're supposed to be able to just quickly pick up with friends. That I'm they not made someone it... that needs an overworld in a game. 
So I wonder yeah, if I know a lot of like people little... really like it when there is an overworld that they can travel through and just like with little hubs or something. But I just mm-hmm. I don't see the point. It's it's more of a gimmick for a me- in to replace a menu. I guess, but at the same time, it's it still has like a nice sort of like connecting feel, and I feel like that's that's right. what I like about Zelda is that the world feels connected, even though every area is so different. Yeah, the Twilight Princess. Is... What about Twilight? Twilight? The best game. <laughs> it's bland. Like the it's a massive world, You're but bland. nothing's in it. <laughs> oh, good. Today on Zelda Informer podcast, Caleb kills Al. <laughs> I love no, Twilight. Why do you say Dun, 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 No, no, why? why do you... I say that the overworld is bland. Why do you say that? Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> there's nothing in it. That's fair, though. He's right. This is just, oh, hi, look, a bacoblin. Let me kill it with one hit on a pona. Oh, God, I'm running again. I think Ocarina had the same issue. Whereas okay. I can say, I think here's, that applies up, to every up, Zelda, up, though. Up, 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 Mr. Link. Here's this giant field. You have to go through it every time you want to go somewhere new. It's like, uh. And then at some Whereas point, in... you get the warp, and you're just like, thank God. Yeah. I almost swore there. That's why I prefer Link to the Past. Because <laughs> it's like, here's an overworld. You can do stuff here. That's why I prefer Super Metroid. That is true. Speaking of which, Caleb. Hi, Adam. Blast Ball. Let's talk about this, okay? What's Blast Ball, Adam? <laughs> it's the new Metroid game. Are you talking game. about that game that doesn't exist? That game that rips <laughs> off Rocket League? It's a good game. It is a very game good. that very good. deserves Adam, hold chance. Hold on, hold on, Adam. I need to pull you aside for a okay, moment. Okay, let's talk. Okay, Adam. Yeah. We talked before we got on the show. <laughs> yeah. We said we weren't going to talk about Blast Ball. I thought we were going to talk about Blast Ball. You told me specifically we I were going to talk said, about Blast no, no, Ball. No, I thought you said no, 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 no. Okay, I thought you said that we were specifically going to talk about Blast Ball. I was you not informed. To, you always do this. You always. Okay. Take you know what? Hey guys, what are you talking about? Caleb, why do you even say anything then? Zion, stay out of this. Do not call me that. Stop. <laughs> All right, we're fine. This we're family's being torn ball. apart. Let's just get it out of the way, Adam. Let's just I talk like about turtles. Blast Ball. <laughs> Go, Adam. Okay. What's your question? So Are their shoes? Yes, no. What? No. <laughs> a lot of series have spinoffs. Sometimes they maybe use to either, you know, draw a new player to a franchise or to, like... Or sometimes they're Donkey Konga. <laughs> we don't talk about that. Well, maybe... So... <laughs> no. Or sometimes they're Mario DDR. What's your point? <laughs> Mario DDR is actually pretty good. Sometimes they're Link's crossbow training. You're not wrong. <laughs> um, but Blast Ball. But Blast Ball. If, if it is a good game. It's not, but yeah. Have you played mm. it? I have. No, I'm talking to Caleb. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. I don't personally find the uh, the idea of Blast Ball interesting. Right. I would probably not even play it when I get the game. Are you, <laughs> you going to get it? it? It's it's coming with Federation Force, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's like I, a multiplayer game. I I don't see myself ever even giving it a that's chance. That's fine. It, that's fine. Yeah. It's like I will try Federation Force, but Blast Ball, the idea playing... of it is not interesting to me. I really feel that it's one of those games that you have to play though before you can judge. Playing it. Blast Ball gave me kind of a good feel of federation force okay of like the controls did they... you play prime hunters <sighs> i don't know did you play the demo for prime hunters on the original ds yes i did okay did it feel comparable to that better than that okay i Fair i enough. did not like the controls on prime hunters okay uh question number two what can you control the camera with the uh the with the c nub i think so Okay. I think I think the controls in that game are a lot better. I think the uh, there's like a lock on feature and then there's a gyroscope feature and you you switch but you can switch between those pretty easily. Oh, so there's gyroscope. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, there's actually a lot of games in in the uh, or I think it was gyroscope, but it, it was something like that. Or it, fe- it felt like a very good like <laughs> mock up of Adam, gyroscope. Adam, um, Adam refers to the but... gyroscope inside of the 3DS as the gyro function. Uh, he's right. <laughs> Thank you, Al, for your fun facts. You're welcome. Um, now go but, back to the corn. What? Yeah, there were a lot of games at E3 that seemed to have, or a lot of Nintendo games that seemed to have the gyroscope function as like. I mean, that's part of the good. Mechanics. Yeah, it's, options are options. And I remember that was like the big thing that people were saying about. I think it was was it Wind Waker where the uh, gyroscope function with the camera. People were like saying how yes. nice it was and stuff. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that, like, they finally listened and heard, like, oh, yeah, people really prefer the gyroscope to just the motion controls because yeah. it's, like, very precise. And yeah. the great thing about Star Fox is, uh, just to mention that briefly, is that 
when you do it, you can reset it really easily. You just click down on the left stick and it's reset. Yeah. All right, that's that's a necessity. That yes. and it's it's so good. It's so good to have that and the multiple camera options. I mean, like it feels like I was able to play the game the way that I wanted to as opposed to being forced to play it a specific way. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, and uh Blast Ball seems pretty good. It has some cool upgrades, some some like exciting gameplay. When you're playing it, it feels very stressful. When you're watching it, it's different. It's like it's almost like fast paced like pool cuz like the way that the ball works, the physics are actually really well really uh what's the word for it? The design on them is on it is really really good. I think it's it, it shooting. Like, are you saying like realistic physics? Yes. When you shoot it okay. at certain angles and stuff, the ball actually works off of those shots. So it's like a pool ball. Okay. And then f- physics and force go into it. And it's, I, I think that if, if this game, despite how they've been treating Splatoon, if this game is somehow a competitive, like, uh, they're like, they're, they're making an exemption with this one. They're like, all right, this game, we're actually going to try to make competitive. It could be good. It could be a really good game. Um, if they try to stifle it and make it like, no, it has to be family friendly, it could ruin it. It can make it something that is really bland and boring because it's like this game and Rocket League are the only two that I've seen that have like this kind of like sports mechanic to it where it's kind of like soccer, sure. but not the same. Sure. Um, and I think that it's, it's kind of refreshing to see because I haven't seen something like this in a while. Uh, but yeah. Fair enough. I have only Teach one their own. issue with Federation Force or Blast Bowl in general. What is that? That they didn't use the funding to make a creative, original, new title like Splatoon or anything. Because Splatoon is a great game. And let, let me, it proves okay, that before Nintendo it, can make mm-hmm. them. Let me, let, me, let me stop you right there. Okay. There's an article by Destructoid I would love you to read. It's called, uh, it's, it's called something along, I'll link it down below. I, and if you haven't read this yet, please do. I think I mentioned it last week. It's called... Uh, Nintendo failed this E3 because it failed to reach my in unreasonably high expectations. Yeah, and, okay. Adam, and look, one of the I'm, things that they mentioned I, was a new IP that I don't know what it is, but I somehow need it. Yeah, okay. Now, can I just state that I am completely against all of the fanboys raging about that the E3 was bad because I love the E3 conference? I really Hello. did. Thank you, Al. I um, agree. I, I thought it was garbage. I, really, we'll I, I have that. the same opinion on that. I just really enjoy. This is something that I enjoy most in gaming, and that's witnessing something or playing a game that is so new and that just gives you a chance to do something that you've never done before. I mean, I picked up Anti Chamber in the Steam sale, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know if you know what kind of game that is. I'll I'll send you a video or something of Anti Chamber later so you can link it, but. It's it's so innovative and so kind of fresh to play, mm-hmm. and I I played it and my it blew my mind simply because I just hadn't witnessed anything like that before and I love that in games. Right. I had the same with Limbo and Super Meat Boy etc. So that's what I kind of hope for with any conference, to a certain extent. That's why I like the Hololens so much as well because uh, the Microsoft thing or yeah the Microsoft Hololens very cool because I it's it. it's it's something new you know i forget who said it i think it was someone on the podcast or before or someone on i think it might have been on your episode caleb um where someone said something like it introduced a new way to interact with the same things that i already like yeah which is good because i don't need i don't always need a new game sometimes like it's fine it's fine to just think uh, think of a different way to approach the same subject like the uh thinking with time machine uh, mod for Portal 2. Oh yeah, I've seen that. It's pretty cool. Can I add that the HoloLens is just terrifying that I can stick my face in a hologram and see <laughs> more holograms? <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. That that made me crap my pants. <laughs> it's like you look at the Oculus dev kit you have and you're like, you're garbage. I was like, he's just going to put his head in there. There's going to be nothing. And there was more. And I was like, <gasps> <laughs> it's like there's a future. <laughs> reasons to explore you're right though i do want to just punt my oculus <laughs> yeah i i wanted to see some stuff but like that were like uh, i wish i had an oculus virtual reality no you don't yes i do <laughs> no, you don't. shut up oh, okay i wish i had no i'm trying to i'm trying to save you <laughs> I'm trying to save you from a problem i do this because i love you yeah i wish but i had we could... the dank memes anyway um, 
but yeah, we. What were we just talking? I feel like we started on Triforce Heroes. I wanted to talk about that, and then we just yep, kind of devolved into nothingness. I mean, Hololens is somewhat related to, to Triforce, so that's true. I, I guess. But yeah, the last thing that I wanted to get into about Triforce Trio, the last piece of news that I saw, uh, if this comes straight from our our site actually, um, and I noticed this while I was at the event. If you look at the 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 concept art or the the art from like the banners from E3. You can see that they have a, a really interesting art style because it's they have the Wind Waker belt, but they have the Link to the Past stripe on their 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 hat, yeah. and their heads are smaller, the eyes are small. Everything about this is like more condensed. It's like they merged a lot of the things about the two Link styles into one thing, which is great. Mm-hmm. And the reason that for that is that um, the original concept art is actually a uh, not derived from four swords that most people might have thought, uh, but it was taken from Spear Tracks and its core mechanics. Okay. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting how how like I like it because it. I always felt that Wind Waker Link's head was too big. It was weird. It seemed kind of like it. It kind of threw me off, and I really like how this new game, it, it seems to mix everything together in a way that you know. It seems like the series is kind of headed in one direction, like as a whole, as opposed to being like this game and this game and this game. It's like no, we there's unity here. I like that. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Since since we're we're talking about Triforce Heroes, I might as well get into one of our fan topics. This comes to us from Michael V. Uh, Hello, Michael. Michael asks, day, Mike. the new game announced at E3 by Nintendo, The Legend of Zelda Triforce Heroes, is a game that features multiple links like Four Swords Adventures. But how do you feel about the absence of Purple Link, and what do you think Nintendo is doing to make fans of Purple Link feel better about his absence? Michael V. Thank you for your question, Michael, and I appreciate it as a fan of Purple Link myself, because purple is my favorite color. Um, so get attached to a color variation of a character that was in one game. I would just like <laughs> to say, fuck? well, the the reason uh, be- before you go into this, Adam, I would just love sure. to say that uh, I hate the color purple. Really? Yep. We can go. I... We can continue now. That that's all I wanted to say. But we can go, continue go the podcast with three people, Zion. Thank you for your terrible. <laughs> int- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just like Purple Link, Zion's being eliminated. What? Um, what? We all thought it would be Chris, but it turns out. <laughs> Zion eliminated the first actual episode I'm that he's on. Adam, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just... <laughs> it's okay. No, you're fine. Um, but actually, the reason that Purple Link wasn't in there, and it makes sense, is because, first off, the three colors they did go with make more sense because it's the three colors of the goddesses, which I don't think there's actually any connection to right now. I didn't notice that. Why? But, right. yeah. It makes way more sense that it's those three colors, and not yeah. only that, it, it, they could have gone with like a, instead of blue or purple, they could have gone with like they could have gone with like an indigo to like match in the middle and it'd still be kind of like Nehru's blue. And I mean the colors but, that they went with, it's it's stuff that they've always done as well. And it's so RGB, it makes sense. the three primary colors and everything. It's it's good colors and for limitations. That's literally the easiest explanation. Yeah, actually, yeah, uh, part of it is, and the best explanation that I've heard is because when they were designing the game, they tried to make it four, but the totem was too tall. And the complications and, like, the the way that the gu- dungeons would be made if you added a fourth would be probably too complicated for most people to handle. And some people are like, oh, well, that's fine. And, you know, like, I'm good at games. I'm good at puzzles. Like, I, I beat Dark Souls without ever using a health vial once. And, I mean, and it's like, and, that's and tr- fine. But that's you and three other people. How and I, I don't know. How solve a problem? Scrap it. It makes Nintendo's life a lot easier right. to cut one player, and you will barely notice the difference. And you'll probably and, prefer it, because it's easier to find two other people to play with than three. Right. Play, a play. lot of the times, like, when I'm playing Verdun, we, it's, it's a, it's a squad-based thing, so you have four people in a squad, and we end up getting three people together, but we never can find a fourth. We can never have, like, a four, full four-person squad, and it always kind of hurts us as a result of it so i kind of prefer that this game is like a three-person thing because it's something that you can play when you only have three people around and, and it's get, quick it's... And, and getting three people to do a specific task is is easier than four as well yeah i mean ve- much easier there's always going to be that one guy <laughs> in the yes, four Zion. Yes. yes oh yeah i, I didn't want to be purple something. anyways <laughs> Zion went from being one of my favorite people at the site to one of my least favorite people at the site. Adam, it's okay. It's all right. I really appreciate that, but it's okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, but yeah, to answer your question, uh, in terms of Purple Link, well, we've seen a lot of things with costumes. 
So if the colors aren't specifically tied to the uh, goddesses, like I'm guessing they are, we might see some color swap options. And if nothing else, go play him in Smash. That's true. Always play him in Smash. Settle in Smash. He looks fantastic in Smash Brothers. And uh, Four, three, yeah, two, I guess that's it for this question. Smash. Thank you again, Michael V. Yeah, thanks, uh, Mike. Thanks, do you want to get into another fan topic? Do you want to get into something else? Let's do a fan topic. All right, let's do another fan topic then. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> this one. Do you want to talk about Triforce Heroes some more? I feel like it's fun to talk about this game. Adam, I'm excited. Don't you have like segments? This is a Zelda podcast, but I might, <laughs> I might go on a snooze fest. Adam, <laughs> you should make segment intros like for fan topics or something. I don't know kind of lame no i agree <laughs> i prefer to just do it live anyway yeah just go um, for it <laughs> do it live, do it live. this do one's live. a little bit long okay. uh dear adam et al i like your use of et al um thank you and it's he spelled it et al so yeah. i'm like <laughs> what's his name uh this is austin hello austin hello austin, Hi, austin. <laughs> he knows me we like you austin the last time I wrote in was February, so greetings to everyone. After quite a long while, I took a hiatus from media for a while, so I've recently been catching up on all I've missed on the ZI podcast, but I've finally gotten there just in time for the E3 episode. I'm sure you've, been, you've plenty to talk about regarding the E3 announcements, such as Triforce Heroes and Federation Force, many others, Nintendo or otherwise. I'm really hoping Kayla will be on this week, as I'm dying to hear his opinions about the new Metro title. With this in mind, my topic is completely E3 unrelated. Austin, why? <laughs> if a future Zelda title were again to include a new world, realm, or area, what would you want it to be like? Again, what do you feel like worked well in the past? What was your favorite world or, you know, place, dungeon, whatever? I loved Subrosia from Oracle of Seasons, as well as the entirely new approach to the world presented by the Great Ocean in Wind Waker. Thank you again, everyone, particularly Adam, for making this podcast every week. I love hearing your opinions about the news and feel so privileged that I and so many others can hear our own topics discussed by fellow gamers for everyone to hear. Sincerely, Austin. P.S. Adam, I hope you had an amazing time at E3. Austin, you're sweet. <laughs> Don't say that you're privileged. We're privileged to get to entertain you guys. Like, this is this is fun for us. This isn't, like, a chore. This is just this is just fun. You know what is a this chore, is fun. though? This, this is good, guys. Stupid Metroid game. <laughs> it might It might be good. Hey, Caleb, I'm I'm really hoping that in a couple weeks You've from now... You've just met me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what, Adam? I'm hoping that in a couple weeks from now that, uh, you, or a couple months from now, when Federation Force is eventually released, you're going to be like, you know what, Adam? This game isn't bad. <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to be bad. I want to make that clear. Okay. I'm just unhappy with what it seems to be at the moment. Right. I'm going to play it. It's, and I'm going to get it reminds me of like, when it comes out. It reminds me of kind of like... I think it's a bad example... Uh, Probably. Kind of like, uh, no, that is a bad example, but it's the thing I can think of the easiest right now, which is like a Tales from Borderlands sort of thing, where it's like a spin Oh, off. that is, oh, it hurts. It's an exploration of the already established world to kind of okay, familiarize you, you with what it is. And it's a yeah. good entry point for a lot of people who don't know the franchise, I think, especially for Metroid Prime or the sure. Metroid, the idea of Metroid. I think that Federation Force should be this sort of like field trip where you're going and like seeing all these locations and like hearing about samus and what she did and like now not to sidetrack to like from the fan topic but you did you play the demo for this game for federation force yes there was no was demo on the one? show floor oh okay they just had blast ball okay because i read that they said it was more action oriented okay and that's what scares me so that's my only complaint and fear but let's Th- get to that the is topic. actually a good that's a good fear yeah uh yeah getting back into the the fan topic uh Favorite overworld, it's obviously going to be for me Link to the Past because it's it's kind of featured uh, in A Link to the Worlds and uh, Four Swords Adventures kind of has some nods to it. I, I really just like that feel and that style of world. Um, I really, it's it's funny. There's not going to be an overworld in, in Triforce Trio, but I would love it to be the same way they had in Four Swords Adventures where it's kind of like, uh, it's like a connecting path and there's like a, a, a overall story that you get to play through. And you can just pick it up with different people. But is there is there any worlds in the Zelda universe or like any like sort of like maps that you really did like? Uh, Caleb, what was like your favorite map from like Twilight Princess? We're not talking uh, strictly overworlds, are we? No, no, we're talking like I mean, he I think it's kind of the overworld idea, but I mean, just like Branching any off. any sort of like area, uh, like place that you'd like to see explored. I like the aesthetics of Ordon ranch and like ordon village and then far on woods next to that okay in, in twilight princess but i also <laughs> really liked uh the 
city in the sky because okay. that that always seemed a bit mysterious. I just like oh. most of the areas in Twilight Princess because they all have a lot of character. Right. You know what bothers me? I mean, I I I mean, I make fun of Skyward Sword all the time, but I really love its overworld. I really love the way it looks yeah. and the way it like everything about the characters and stuff. And I it's love the idea well of Skyloft. Done. I like this idea of this like society that is cut off from the rest of the world. It's very well executed as well. Mm -hmm. It's it's very in style with like the the hero's journey, where there's even like a literal barrier in between Skyloft and the world below, which is the the, the clouds. Yeah. Um, I think that it'd be nice to revisit that, but probably in a different style or a, a different way of approaching it. That I always have a problem with in 3D games. Um. But I yeah, had one that's, problem that's... with Skyloft, which was basically that it astounded me that no one had tried making a parachute or a glider or something and just tried gliding down. I mean, it was still pretty young in terms of like a society. It's still mm -hmm. like, what, how many years old was it? I think it was like a couple hundred. Yeah, I mean, I could see people. Be, I mean, if you go down, how are you going to come back up unless I mean, I yeah. guess if you had a loft wing or something, but um... but they can't reach past a certain point. Right, they can't like they can't penetrate the lower bar of the the barrier. Well, it's not like everyone is sane in a society. <laughs> we don't know if there are people trapped there. Yeah, though. I mean, people could have jumped off and never returned and just. Well, poof, there's poof, a, there's poof. an idea based on the based on the ruins and things down below. There's an idea that there may have been people there, or there there is possibly like settlements in the world below. But uh, Skyloft is specifically the one that we know is like definitely the. Hylian people. I'm not sure what they're if they're called the Hylians in that game. I always forget. Um, but yeah, the the, Sky the citizens of Skyloft, is, Skyloft is the only human race that I'm fully aware of that exists in Skyward Sword. But yeah, um, yeah, that would be one of the one of the two. That and Link to the Past. I think my favorite area out of any Zelda game would really be the sacred. Oh, what is it in Twilight Princess where you revisit the Lost Woods? Sacred Realm or the Sacred or the uh just I got a nostalgia overflow and I never get a nostalgia overflow so <laughs> I know my answer is in Twilight Princess I just don't know what it is I... can you describe it no like I'm just saying I know that my favorite would be from that game I also have a sick theory about that area but oh what is it do you have a do you want to share it with us oh god right it's I I've been meaning to write an editorial about this for since I started at Zelda Informer, which is like eight or nine months ago, um, I just never got around to it. I'll try to sum it up as quickly as possible. It's basically trying to pinpoint what happened to the Temple of Time and how it moved around throughout the ages. Um, the simplest thing you can say, and it fits with the timeline, although the timeline is wrong, even though it fits with the timeline as well. Basically, it starts with Skyward Sword. You have the Temple of Time in the desert, right? Mm -hmm. Um, They rebuild like Hyrule in the area below. The Desert Temple of Time gets abandoned because it's in the desert and very hard to reach. I mean, look at all the sand pits around there. So they abandon that Temple of Time, and it falls into ruin. In the center of Hyrule at that point, we have Ocarina of Time, Hyrule, let's say there. You have the Temple of Time close to the castle. Now, what happens is that um, the Temple of Time does not necessarily move. In Okay, I should give more context with that. Uh, the Temple of Time is next to the castle in Ocarina of Time, in, next to Hyrule Castle. Right. Uh, in Twilight Princess, the, you reach the Temple of Time in what used to be the Lost Woods. And it's very evident that it used to be the Lost Woods. Um, you basically enter the Temple of Time where the Forest Temple would be in Ocarina of Time. Now, it, it might be kind of far-fetched, but I kind of have a hunch, or at least it's a theory, whatever. Uh, I think that you might teleport back in time and just to a different place when you reactivate the Temple of Time, so that you teleport back into the Temple of Time of Ocarina of Time next to the castle, not necessarily that the Temple of Time was actually there, um, that it was just the ruins that, mm -hmm. of, of the forest temple then, and that the um, temple just plays out as normal, but that the uh, current Temple of Time 
I'm not sure where that... I haven't figured out yet where that one is in Twilight Princess that yet. But Arbiter's Grounds has a lot of the um, characteristics of the Temple of Time of Skyward Sword. So I have a hunch that the Temple of Time of Skyward Sword would also be the Arbiter's Grounds then. Because of the Seven Sages that feature prominently, because of the sand area, even the map is similar. Um, just those kind of elements all add up. There's more. I can't come up with them off the top of my head, but that's the basic gist of it. That's all right. I mean, just, you, you seem to have a lot already, so... Yeah, I thought about I, this I like way it. too much. No, it, no, it's fine. It's, it's just that the Temple of Time moves around a lot simply due to civilization moving around. Right. You wonder settling. if there's like some sort of like spiritual connection between them. Yeah, I think I think it's a because cool idea. the the widely accepted theory is that Hyrule Castle just moved north, and I'm just like, we just took the castle and pushed it somewhere else. Yeah, that that's the dumb idea. That <laughs> oh yeah, the castle was next to Temple of Time, but now the castle is way up north. I like to imagine moved the castle. <laughs> I like to imagine the castle like spread its arms and legs and just like lifted <laughs> itself like a skirt and just like walked up. <laughs> What was the area called in Twilight Princess where you got the fallen chain? Oh, like the snow, snow icy area. Yeah, I, I like that. Snow place Peak, a lot. mountain, <laughs> mountain something. It's something That's generic. That's my answer. <laughs> snow Peak Mountain, probably. Let me check. Uh, yeah, it's found in the Snow Peak ruins, actually. Yeah. Look at that. Like, there you I go. Like that. that place is pretty cool. Yeah, it's a pretty cool area. When I think of Twilight Princess, I have an image of that place. I I always I think Blizzetta. of, like, I just think of the color gray and brown. Blizzetta is the knees bees. The be- <laughs> Is it just me or does, like, Twilight Princess always look like it has one of those, like, Instagram, like, filters on it? Just mm-hmm. constantly. I love <laughs> it's still the best. It's a good game. Hashtag Twilight Princess. <laughs> Hashtag no filter. What's next on the docket? Uh, we have another fan topic. We have some other stuff I'd like to talk about that has to do with recent releases. Um, do you did you guys see the news about uh, Batman Arkham Knight? Have you guys played that? Oh by God, yes. Oh yeah. dear God. Uh, that is that is sad. <laughs> to sum it up, so for anyone who got doesn't, right? Sorry, what, Caleb? The PC port got outs- outsourced, right? Yes, and yeah. the other problem with it was that. Um, well, to sum it you... up, basically, Warner Brothers released Arkham Knight, and it ran like terribly donkey balls it, um, on PC. It, ran, it runs awful. Yeah, Just... it it really does. Okay, um, it. One of my friends is like a big PC gamer guy, and he said, and he has a Europe PC. He's like he has a custom built uh, one yeah. that's pretty high end, and. He went in and he reduced everything down to the minimum. He reduced Bloom and everything like that, all the stuff in the internal settings, down to, like, bare minimum. So this game is running at the smoothest it can possibly run. Yeah. And all it went down to, all it went up to was 17 frames. Yeah. Oh, so it's a Ubisoft game. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah, um, the, Ubisoft also has a really bad reputation of having really bad PC ports. The just funny just thing terrible is... Terrible PC ports. What Warner Brothers did as a reaction to all the negativity surrounding the game, mm-hmm. is they pulled the game from Steam. Right. Until they fixed the problems. and Which they even makes sense. Yeah, I mean, um, they don't want that un- unfinished game to keep getting... They don't want people to keep buying it and getting right. upset. They exactly. want to be like... Right. They realize they, they made a mistake and they're handling it. They also uh, encouraged people to refund the game. Of course. Via that's Steam sure. refunds. That's, good. That's, that's fine. That's actually it's actually very that's very good of them to do that. Kind of a they, humane action. Best thing they could have done in their position. Exactly. Yeah. They 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 saw that they made a mistake. They addressed it honestly, and they said we're sorry. And the biggest biggest deal being that they stopped their income to fix the problem. Yeah, of course. They that's they said very we don't want your noble. No, not only did they say we don't want your money in any, anymore, we want you to get your money back. Right. Until we it, fix it's it. It's a very noble something. action. Although you can also question why they released an unre- uh, an unfinished game. Uh, deadlines. What ends up happening a lot of the time is investors will basically push a company to release a game way too early because they want to release this many games by this deadline. They want to have something up by Christmas. They need to have something up by summer. They need to have this and that. They need to basically just make people that are investing money happy by releasing games that even they know aren't worth putting out yet and then trying to patch it as quickly as possible. 
to prevent number two being that this was outsourced which means it was already an afterthought yeah. so they probably didn't pay any attention to it before it was released they didn't pay enough at the very least it doesn't yeah. matter how much they were it, it wasn't enough because they honestly could have just not known anything about it until the fans started backlash and they honestly they they had to lie from the start just to make people happy i remember seeing something like uh they did the they showed like a demo footage of the game and the game they could the best they could run it at was 30 frames per second but they wanted to make it look like it could run at 60 frames per second so what they did is they sped up the footage but they forgot to do any audio editing so if you watch that footage of it running at 60 frames per second all the enemy's pitches are raised up <laughs> because of the speed that's dirty wow yeah it's it's amazing that's one of the dirtiest tactics I've ever seen. It's it's just cheap, and it's like, I get it if it was trying to like say like this is what the game will look like, but the fact that they released it and it never got to that point is kind of like, ugh. yeah, there's no excuse for that at all. Yeah, that's nasty. Hashtag no filter. <laughs> Thank you, Zeon. Welcome. That's what I wanted to say about that. I think it's just, it's just like it was a mess. <laughs> the game was a mess. Thanks, uh, Obama. Speak, spe- Speaking of things that are a mess, but for a different reason, can you guys guess how many times per day someone is playing uh, the Fallout Shelter game? Zero. <laughs> uh, a lot, a lot. The current Isn't record it right now one is about on App Store? seventy million people <sighs> per day are, or seventy million times per day that game is played. I was going to say seventy million people. If it came to Android. My- my my coworker today at work. I mean, he plays a lot of PC games, but he doesn't. He never plays anything mobile at all. And he just told me today that he was downloading it to see what the the buzz was all about. So, which I- uh, actually, I was a. Uh, if anybody knows uh, Commander Holly, she's a big cosplayer. Uh, I was. She was just standing around waiting to be mic'd up and stuff, and I was chatting with her, and she's telling me that you know the game is good, and you don't actually need any of the 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 purchase stuff you don't need to purchase any of the things from the store to be able to play the game it's not one of those games where but wait you said it's a mobile game yes you don't have to pay to win this mobile game but 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 that's what mobile means no surprisingly a mobile game or an mmo can be a non-pay to win game even though almost every believe you (laughs) yeah neither do i the game doesn't cost anything either right it's it's free free to play is that it's not the world ends with you or any other square enix game on mobile that's true I repeat, when will it come to Android? Uh, but I think Fallout Shelter is actually free. I don't see a yeah, person here. I actually also think it's free. Free. I remember reading that somewhere. Yeah, there's the uh, there's the like lunch boxes you can buy. But like I said, I was talking to some people that like oh. have the game, and they said it was not not necessary. There's to be a able great to play. story that we can segue into in uh, after Fallout Shelters. Some what guy pre-ordered Fallout Four with beer caps. Oh yeah, I saw that. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, one guy sent Bethesda um, thousands of bottle caps um, as a payment in the uh, like he said he doesn't have pre-war money, uh, but he thought that this would be a suitable. He didn't and he didn't know the actual exchange rate, so he just sent them all the bottle caps he collected, and so he sent them I think over like a thousand or or a couple thousand bottle caps as payment and. Knowing how cool Bethesda is, they're probably going to send them a free copy of the game. They will. They confirmed they would. Oh, nice. I, it sucks that they're not going to send them a Pip-Boy edition, but that'd be, it'd be cool if they did. I really <laughs> want that Pip-Boy, by the way. Yeah. Oh. Like, if there's ever been... Although, I, $100 for just, like, a phone mount is a bit of a stretch, uh, in it's, my opinion. It's, like, it's only 100 Yeah. It's only. That's a lot less than I thought it was. Yeah. Be. No, that thing is... That thing is more useful than a lot of the stuff that these DLC things come with, or like uh, collector's editions True. come with. And it's something you can wear, and something that like, if you own one and you go to like a convention or anything, you're probably gonna wear it because mm-hmm. it's cool. I think that's cool. totally worth it, to be honest. Yeah, True. I thought it was more expensive, and I'm gonna throw myself under the bus here. I pre-ordered the $250 Halo Five thing. Oh I understand, God. and I don't even know what's in it. I understand. So. This is like this is perfectly Caleb. Okay Caleb, I feel like you and I both have like this disgusting relationship with Halo, where it's like, yeah, you can have my money. <laughs> I didn't even know you had a relationship with Halo. I do, and I and I hate it because it's abusive, <laughs> so abusive. Like our relationship, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> um, <laughs> shut Jolly up times. <laughs> we laugh to hide the pain. <laughs> we laugh to hide the pain. Uh, do you want to talk about our last fan topic about, uh, 
Triforce Heroes. Yeah, sure. You're down with that. Um, hey, Adam, Jacob, Caleb, guest, and especially Chris. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> oh, hi, I'm Chris. First of all, first of all, uh, thank you for your opening. Uh, I don't know whose name. I don't. I don't have a name. I was, for this. I was gonna ask what's his name. I don't have a name for this one. Well, we don't have your name, or I would have said hello, but. Hello, uh, anonymous. I, I'll, I'll apologize next week if you actually put your name, and I just somehow lost it. Um, hey guys, post Adam here. Uh, the fan who sent that in was Aaron Troy. Thank you so much, Aaron Troy, uh, for sending that topic. And to everyone else who sent in topics, we will get to all of them as soon as possible. Tons of emails have come in. We're a little bit backlogged. Sorry about that. Enjoy the rest of the episode. But first of all, it's Jake. We don't have a Jacob. Uh, second, uh, we don't have a guest this week. And who's Chris? Um, but anyway. <laughs> His, his email reads, Where do you think Triforce Heroes will fall in the official timeline? I have two theories. Either it could be in the Gold Era, hundreds of years after A Link Between Worlds, and the era where the monarchy becomes irresponsible and begins using the Triforce, or in the Force Era, where the Force Swords are back in Hyrule with a small kingdom and the Master Sword was not in use. Thoughts? Keeping your mation themselves, especially Chris, he needs the love. Thank you so much, man. He really doesn't, though. <laughs> he, does, <laughs> he knows. Just let him wallow in his own pity. He knows you guys love him. He knows. We we love. Him. We do. Isn't he like kind the of. coolest coolest guy on the block or something? Isn't no, he's, a, he's okay. Let me uh, pull out my Hyrule Historia <laughs> and take a quick look to see if I can pinpoint the exact location. Do on you the have that in your pants at all times? You know, I really when it comes to the, the the timeline, it's it's a lot easier to just start out by just saying, do you think this is like a post game or a pre game? Do you think this is something that's going to happen way in the past or way in the beginning or way in the the future or, or do you think- be canon at all? That's another thing, because that's now a thing that we can Confirmed. question. Canon. Is it a, like an alternate timeline? <laughs> New <Yeah>. timeline! <laughs> just like another branch off. It's like The now fashion we have timeline. It's, it's the non-canon timeline <laughs> that just goes in the opposite direction of all of the other ones. Yeah. It just, literally goes to the right. It goes yeah. diagonally yeah, right. down and up at the same time. <laughs> it's like, what's going it's on? It's on the other side of the page by itself. And at the end, is just Shigeru Miyamoto's face. He's just like, <laughs> ah... <laughs> it's very happy and it's like I can't be mad because his face is so happy we uh, shall call yeah. it the fashion timeline that is true and Groose and give him actually considering the how crazy the king is in this one I'm gonna say it takes place around the time of Minish Cap yeah Isn't it's gonna Minish take Cap place early? right after those games or right before Minish Cap is early right like before Minish Cap Ocarina is very of time. early it's one yeah. of the first games I was also thinking before after. Ocarina of Time yeah, definitely before Ocarina of Time. Yeah, it's uh it's a it's the first timeline. It's the yeah. before the split. Um yeah, and I think I think it fits with the art style and everything. I think it makes sense as to why later generations look the way they do if that falls so early. And I think it makes sense why we've never heard about this before. Yeah. If not only that kind but... of if we kinda of have it happen and then no one ever talks about it again because it was like wrong or something was weird about it. Um yeah. That's my theory. Your theory is going to be my theory, then. You like it? I love yeah, it. I, mean... I want to wallow in it. Can I have a bathtub filled <laughs> Usually with Usually Caleb theory? is so quick to criticize. This is the first time I think that uh, Caleb thinks that I actually have a good idea for once. Caleb has not been criticizing. But yeah. Uh, Al, do you have a sort of a counter-argument by any chance? Oh. You could say that it's in the um, Wind Waker timeline somewhere. Really? Yeah, in a sense, because Ooh. you can move down to Spirit Tracks, and Spirit Tracks has That's some what really weird is. folk, right? Mm-hmm. Like the weird, like it's branches. A strange people. Yeah, strange people everywhere. So you could say that it's one of those little side towns in the Spirit new Tracks. New content, new continent, new lore. Yeah, new, exactly. New adventure. I like it. Uh, but yeah, that's. Uh, thank you again to whoever sent us that topic. I Amen. forgot your name. Uh, but thank if you, you have any of your own topics. Feel free to email this to us at zeldinformerpodcast at gmail.com. That's zeldinformerpodcast at gmail.com. We got uh, fan topics, theme song submissions, uh, art, anything like that. Uh, thank you again. We also accept fan fiction. We do. We do accept that. And if you ever send it to us, we pr- we might read it on the show. Me and Jake will probably read it on the show. <laughs> what if you're not in it? pictures of your right pinky. How do you? Why do you well, think I mean, that you'd, if, you'd be in it, Caleb? If it's going to be fan fiction about anybody, it's going to be about me and Jay. <laughs> why is that? Come on, let's be real. I'm hurt. Because we've requested <laughs> it before. Adam, you're a cat. That would be bestiality or furry. 
Oh, okay, video games. Anyway, I think it's video games. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think I think I have a shot of being in some fan fiction at some point. What? You can watch. <laughs> we just have a ranking. Yeah, so if, if anyone fiction. if anyone puts me in fan fiction, it'll be with like chocolate and fries everywhere, just because they only know that I'm from Belgium. Chocolate covered fries sound disgusting. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um. Uh. So Caleb. Hi, Adam. We kind of we kind of talked a little bit about our what we saw at A three, but I feel like we didn't really get as much into it as I would like to. And okay. we could talk about that, or we could talk more about Fire Emblem if because I have some things I want to talk about that. Some okay. interesting things about that. What, what what do you feel like talking about? What are you, what are, what are you interested in? I know nothing about uh, Fire Emblem. Just... I'm interested in E3 because it only comes around every now and then. That's true. That's true. We're gonna be talking about it a lot because we have so much to cover. We have so much to do, so much to see, so much. So what's wrong with taking the back street? Um, yeah. But yeah. So so tell me what you what's on your mind with E3? Uh, I played every game at the Nintendo booth area except for Chibi Robo. And I have a question for you. What? What was your favorite game that you played? Triforce Heroes. Oh, I should have seen that one coming. Oh, wow. Because, and it's not because it was a Zelda game. Because it was probably the most fun Zelda. Like, it's the most fun game I played there. Not to say the other games were bad. I don't no, think there I was a... You. What? No, I said no, I get you. It just, it felt good, and it felt like something I was actually going to be playing for a while. Well, question number two. Mm-hmm. What was your least favorite game? Ooh. Um... I... That's a, that's a good question. I... Let me let me just go through the games that we did play, and okay. maybe it'll help me figure out what I really disliked. Um, All right, I'll fire so, off questions so if I have any. The first one that I thought I would immediately dislike was the Super Mario Tennis game, uh, right. Ultra Smash. Oh right, yes. that exists. And the when I was watching people play it, the first thing that I noticed was, man, this game looks slow. This game yeah. looks slow. The camera looks weird. The controls look weird. And then I played it, and my yeah. god. That game feels fast. Yeah. It looks That's slow. That's definitely tennis in general. It looks slow. It's boring to watch, but you will have a good time just being stressed out of your mind over that game. Now, question about Mario Tennis in general. What? Have you played them before? I have. Okay. Uh, is there anything different or an improvement from the old ones to this one? I really like the feel of this one. I really like the way it looks. It's gorgeous. Okay. I think that... There's some cool things to it. There's some cool finer mechanics, but it felt like, for the most part, I really could just button mash. Um, so, but so basic no, generic improvement. Generic improvements, yeah. So the the usual sort of things you expect with a sequel. Gotcha. Basically, a new coat of paint, better, gotcha. tighter controls. Um, the I don't know if this was in the previous games. I don't remember, but there were mega mushrooms in this one. I don't recall if they were or not. I don't think so. Uh, but yeah, you could get a mega mushroom either like when you're doing really well or your opponent's doing really well. And like, like it would just happen randomly. One of the toads would throw in one on the field and you have to run to it and touch it. And you become gotcha. giant in size. And it's good, but it's also bad because while it gives you a wider range of cover, if you get smacked in the face in this game by the tennis ball, it's yeah. automatically a point for the other guy. So it's not a power up. It's balanced. Yeah. I would like say it, so. It has, and it, it, it has you, a, a you, negative side. You you will say like, oh, oh no, when they get it. But at the same time, you're like, I can still do this. You're not going right. to be like, they they automatically won. Right. But it is it is very comfortable to get it. I felt That's good. I was like, when I got it, I was like, yes. But at the same time, when someone else got it, I was like, okay, let me just you know I have to just like plan and be like careful, a little bit. You know, well, overall, you, that sounds pretty pleasing, then. Yeah. It's not Strikers or anything. It's but never going to be Strikers. Sounds... Strikers was amazing. Three on three, which is also good. <laughs> Strikers was so amazing. Yeah. I love that game. That's good, though. Because it was so violent. Yeah. <laughs> like, most soccer games are pretty violent, but this one was just like, oh my god. Hey, it was supposed to be worse. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know FIFA tried their hand at a game like that once? What? FIFA tried their hand at a game like that once. Really? It's called FIFA Street. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. There's basically no power-ups or any of the awesome things about Mario Strikers. But you get a gun. Or a soccer ball. <laughs> it, it's, it's basically... You just get a gun, and that's no, it. You can, like, go against the rules of normal soccer. So thug. Using your hands. Yeah, like, hitting against the ball. Tackling someone. I'm, did I just say soccer? I'm European. What am I doing? Football. There we go. <laughs> 
So it's like backyard soccer. Yeah, basically. Like the, like the backyard no, franchise. No, no, no. Intense, Caleb, intense and violent. street soccer. Street. FIFA street. Soccer in the streets. <laughs> soccer in Football. the streets. What? Football. <laughs> Football. Football. Um, but yeah, so Strikers Tennis was actually pretty pretty surprisingly good. Um, Yoshi's Woolly World. Okay. And let's talk I'm about curious. this, Jacob. But dear God. Uh-huh. I my young boyish heart could not take it. It uh, it was too cute. Is it, it like epic yarn where you can't die? No, you can die. Okay, so there's challenge in this game. Yes. Okay, good. I, I think I failed the first time I played it on like That's, medium. That was my one concern, and now I can there, wholeheartedly buy this video game and not feel bad. There is a good thing about it though. Like if you're not big on on competitive stuff or like or like challenge and stuff, there's a mellow mode where you get you get Yoshi's wings. Okay. And it's super easy. And okay. it's fun. And I think this game is going to be great for date night. And awesome. You date can, night? like, you uh, you collect, like, little, like, gems. And that gets you different power-ups you can buy. You can purchase mm-hmm. in the in-game store. Not, like, not like buying, like, in-app purchases. But, like, you have, like, a, you have, like, a, a shop that's always available whenever mm-hmm. you press pause. And one of the things you can get is Poochie. He's a little dog. And he's and so... Disclaimer. Adam said this would be perfect for date night. Let me let me give you some tips. For the love of God, make sure she likes video games first. Yeah, yeah. Don't just be like, "Hey, you want to play?" <laughs> or uh, even, or even like, even you if she's play, not crazy about video world. games, it's still a cute game. It's is like a really like a, cute game. Is that like a card game? Just make sure this is the best idea for your for your date. Make sure it fits. <laughs> yeah, make, make sure, sure it fits. Don't, don't just don't just don't feel take, like I bought Whirly World last night. I don't have the night. patience to net. <laughs> Don't take a dude that likes likes to talk to see a a, a play because he's gonna lose. Don't his take mind. Adam to a play. <laughs> I will lose my mind. <laughs> Don't take Adam. Take me anywhere. to a musical. Now you're talking. <laughs> now you know. But yeah, that's like. good. I'm I'm really really happy to hear that Wooly World's gonna have some yeah some challenge to it. Yeah, it it actually has a very good variety of gameplay, and Poochie is so adorable it hurts. He's and... a cute little pug, and you can ride on him with your Yoshi. And the oh. way, and it's super cute, and he runs off of things because he's oh, an idiot. Good. But then he jumps back in, and he's so happy. And it's like important question though. What? Also, uh, how is the soundtrack? Nice. It's not. Good. It's not the usual. From what I heard, because it was hard to hear there. Right. It didn't sound like the usual kazoo thing that I genuinely dislike. And that was my concern because the last game was Kazoo Fest, and, and I, I hate didn't want Kazoo Fest too. <laughs> I think I, w- I was getting into a car the other like the other day f- with Jake, and he and his girlfriend both just pull out kazoos, and it's like, <laughs> and I was just like super what? tempted to like we were in motion at that point, and I was tempted to just open the door and roll out of the car into like heavy traffic. It's funny because I can see them doing this <laughs> for no reason, just to like like ruin they put my on life. sunglasses, look at each other, and say it's time, pull out kazoos and just start <laughs> humming Earthbound themes. I guess we can pretty much skip over Mario Maker, though, because we've seen, like, five hours of footage on this. I played it. If you haven't seen me play it, it's it's funny, because I'm not yeah, great at Mario Maker. It looks Maker. great, Also, really marketing okay, it so much. So, I have a complaint. Okay. So, that, the guy who was in charge of that, like, bigger booth area thing, before me, someone else was playing the, the Zelda game, and I didn't watch them, because I, I was busy with something else, but... They died twice, and then he said, "You know what? You get three tries because it's the Triforce or something like that." And then I played it, and I died twice. And he's like, "That's it." And I'm like, "But you gave the last person three tries." <laughs> Maybe you just weren't cute enough, Adam. Did you actually say that, Adam? No, but Why didn't I. Did you, Caleb? Hi. It was actually pretty funny. I did use my looks once to. Uh, uh... So remember, I said that the I didn't play the Chibi Row game. Yes. But you needed to play every single game to get all the pins. Yes. So it was the second day, and the show was about to close. It was about like five minutes in. And I go up to the, the, the Chibi Robo booth, and I was like, uh, hi, are you guys still open? She's like, no, we're closed. I'm sorry. And I'm like, oh, well, I really wanted to get the pin. She's like, can you come back tomorrow? And I'm like, I don't know. I'm kind of busy. <laughs> and she's like, well, okay. And so she just gives me a pin, and I'm like, I feel so dirty. <laughs> You should feel dirty. <laughs> Hello, fans. You just heard it here first. Adam's disgusting. Did I you am, take I feel free to send your hate mail to Zelt. Well, I don't even know our email. Zelda Informer Podcast at gmail.com. There you go. How I do said you it. not know it? You've been here I, for like. 
how many episodes have you been here? It's like 20? Too many. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> Too many. <laughs> uh, is, that, is there anything else you want to talk about this week? Uh, was that all the games you played? Uh, no, I played some more games. I played Super Mario Bro- uh, Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. That one is, feels the most disgusting. How did no, you enjoy I that? loved it. Okay, good. <laughs> loved it. Good. It was good. I love Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga. And I like Paper Mario. And I, I think, do as well. And I think that if you like both those games, you're going to like this game. Just because, a short, yeah. short intermission. For anyone who's interested in uh, Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga, um, Superstar Saga, sorry, Trigger Conroy just started a new Let's Play on that. He's a great guy. Check it out. It's awesome. Oh, speaking of Let's Plays, I recently started watching uh, Super Best Friends. Woo! Because uh, I was looking for something new, and Caleb was like, let me show you my world. And it was it was really great. I I started watching their it was like a, it's called Spin Dash where they play Spin Sonic Dash games. Quick looks. Yeah. Well, this yeah. one was a longer one. This is a let's play, and yeah. it was uh, Sonic Adventure. Oh yeah. And yeah. I'm gonna say this now. I I used to be a really big fan of Sonic Adventure as a kid. Watching them play it has only strengthened my love for that game, because oh my god, it was such a good game. Well, who's your favorite character in Sonic? In Sonic Adventure. Who's the title character? Big the cat. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> actually, actually, no. I'm gonna take that back. It's chaos. Because the only answer is Big the cat. You already failed. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> um, I'm only like two episodes into that playthrough, but it's really great. Um, I also really miss the old voice actors for Sonic. I miss the old voice of Sonic. I miss the old voice of Tails because it was actually, I think, a little kid. And I miss Sonic. Yeah, he sounded. He sounded like a little kid. He was awkward. He was. If you want to send your hate mail and your pictures of Big the Cat to Adam, no, no, no. send them to our... No. Big the co- Cat in, like, a Zelda costume. Froggy. Froggy. Anyway. Um, Who is Big the Cat? Big the Cat He's is a, a cat, cat that plays fishing minigames. There's, like, Blaze five... let herself go. There's, like, five stages of him, and it's the worst thing ever. <laughs> On what? In Sonic Adventure. Oh, <laughs> They had Sega Bass Fishing, and they're like, ah, put it in the game. Yeah, boy, it. They put everything in that game. There's pinball, there's, like, puzzles, uh, there's spin fishing. Ball. <laughs> yeah, spinball. Spinball. No, but that game is great, and I love it. And anyone who says Sonic Adventure is a bad series is wrong. I hate Sonic. But it is a bad series. And I invite... Caleb, Caleb, you know what? You know what? I'm tired of you. I'm tired of okay. you. I'm tired of your nonsense. I'm sure the fans are, too. <laughs> I hate Sonic in general. You hate Sonic in general? Yeah. Why? He's never appealed to me. And never. And I always, like, I'm really bad at those kind of games. So whenever... It, oh, so like, because you're bad at those games, you don't think it's good. I don't have fun with them. Oh, okay. Because the, fo- the focus is on speed. And then yeah. I just lose my speed constantly because I hit you know, everything. The, the A big problem with Sonic games that I think that Zelda games had at one point was like focus on what makes them unique. Yeah. With Zelda games, it's good puzzles and good like just puzzles. Like even the combat should be a puzzle. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sonic is a game about speed. Yeah. But so many Sonic games have been about not going fast. Yeah. About if you go fast, you're gonna get punished. My favorite Sonic game is the one where I don't go fast. Which one is that? <laughs> Said no one ever. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Like, maybe my hate for Sonic is also because I played a lot of Sonic Unleashed. Oh, no. Oh, God. I played, so... like, a minute of that game. And I oh, I think I played the, the first thing, which was, like, the, the regular stages where you're you're just running around as Sonic. And it was like, the good this stages? is amazing. This is everything I wanted. And then the Warehog stuff started. Yeah. I'm like, oh, God, what? why? Why did they do this? Also, Hylia, why did you do this to me? And it's like, go back to Zelda. And it's like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Blast Ball is the Metroid as Warehog is the Sonic. No, 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 no. No, no, no. I actually was having fun with Blast Ball. With Werehog, I felt like I was being punished. I felt like someone had said, you were having too good of a day, let me ruin it for you. Now you know how I feel. I feel like I'm being punished. <laughs> Your Snapchats during E3 were amazing. <laughs> it's my favorite thing. Adam. What's up? Sum up Sonic 06 in one sentence. Too early. <laughs> It's no use. Release too early. Oh, that's the other thing. <laughs> There's too many things to say. You can't sum it up in one sentence. 
to then? It's no use. Take this. <laughs> <laughs> Take this. Anyway, getting back into the games that I played at E3. Uh, weirdly enough, Smash Brothers was there, but Splatoon was not, or I would have played Splatoon. Mm-hmm. Um, the reason that Splatoon was or Smash Brothers was there was probably because of the DLC, but I still think it was weird that they didn't include Splatoon, which is their not like big selling franchise right now. Um, especially because I was kind of looking forward to some Splatoon stuff, right. and last year it had such a huge presence. Uh, I did was not it there play. Last year? What was it there? Yes, last year it was. It was a big game last year. In a demo. Now, do you want to take this opportunity to cover the uh, Smash news? Oh, the uh, the DLC stuff, or the yes. the the new the more DLC stuff. The the, the more DLC. Oh yeah, stuff. recently Sakurai said that they are uh, currently working on more characters. They've been working on some characters since before the Smash ballot, and they're looking at the stuff from the Smash ballot, and everything that they're working on after what they've already started working on is going to be just fan service stuff. So, like, er- characters from Smash Ballot. The are, words fan service. Were things that were he used. actually used, yeah. And they said several more characters. And, and, and Sakurai saying that he's doing something for people not himself is very surprising. And I'm yeah. curious how that will turn out. Because Sakurai is Sakurai. It'll turn out a lot of money in his pocket. <laughs> He'll, he might realize, maybe I should just do this more often. This is the decline of a great man, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's. I think it's Watch good. Watch as his wallet fills and his heart shrinks. <laughs> his heart was already so small. Next direct, you'll see him in a suit. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Next direct, you'll see him. But he won't see you. <laughs> He'll have aged all those years. Because you know, like there was always that running joke that Sakurai is like, he never ages or he, he gets younger. Bit. Yeah. Like next year, he shows up and he's just like withered and old. Hello! And it's like, oh god. I thought for for a minute you were going to say next year he shows up and he's like an infant. Just, <laughs> I'd love to see Sakurai do like throw darts at a random board with like Banjo-Kazooie, Shantae, Shovel Knight. And then he misses the board. And then he misses the entire board and just hits something like Master Chief. <laughs> something incredibly stupid. Angry Birds. <laughs> yeah. He hits Ridley and then he burns the dart board and <laughs> pretends like he never did it. And then he, then, no, he picks up the dart from the board and he's like, uh, and he puts it on Angry Birds and he's like, Angry Birds, coming to Smash. <laughs> <laughs> Angry Birds. <laughs> flinging, flinging in. I don't know. Oh, I seem to have branded on Ridley. Let me change it to Angry Birds. <laughs> anyway. That was not supposed to happen. <laughs> Uh, what what else did I play? D three. I can't remember. Oh, uh, did you play Halo? I did not. Like I said, oh. the lines were two hours long, and gotcha. I could not get in. You it didn't was... wait two hours for a mediocre video game. No, I I wanted to, <laughs> but I I was too busy doing things. Yeah, I understand. I wouldn't have done it. Like, I walked over to that area, the Microsoft area, and all I saw were jocks. Ugh. Like, not even, like, football, jo- like, jockey guys. Like, they're like, dude, Halo, what's up, guys? Do you want to play some Takad? Like, yeah, dude, whatever. Let's go. Let's drink some Mountain Dew. Yeah, Keely, I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> Just, like, that, that, the that, Doritos. That, I mentioned this probably last week, but there's two sides of E3. There is the, we like video games, and there's the Mountain Dew Rito side. And Microsoft and Sony have basically become that. Every time I take damage in Halo at the demo, I want them to chuck Doritos at me. <laughs> You like stop getting shot. <laughs> Get better at the game. <laughs> Just like hitting you in the face, and you're like, "Please stop." <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> Put on these goggles. See you in hologram. I don't want to see this. <laughs> what is up with this green tint? Now you're in Mountain Dew Vision. Oh no. Anyway, uh, can't remember if there was any other Nintendo games I played. It was all a blur. Just doing videos. If you want to see the stuff that I did play that we recorded, check the uh, ZeldaInformer.com. It's a YouTube page. On, it's just Zelda Informer, I think, on YouTube. Yep. And you can see me playing uh, Mario Maker, the Zelda games with some of the guys from the uh, from the site, and uh, possibly Yoshi's Woolly World. I think that should be there. And cool. I switch off at one point with Zeon because I'm so terrible at Yoshi's Woolly World that I ran away in shame. I will definitely check out the Woolly World video. You can also check out cute. podcast blips that I made, or at least one of them, because I always slack on the others and then never finish them. <laughs> It's all right. We we appreciate the one that you did. It's a good one. All right, yeah. guys. I think that's it for this week. It's a little shorter than usual, but uh, yeah, it's kind of a quiet episode. Zeon passed out on us. 
See him? Actually, don't, no, we kicked him out. Don't wake our sleepy little baby. We, we kicked him out, like the purple link that he is. Yes. <laughs> All right, guys. It does not belong. Thanks, Thanks for joining for me. joining us. Yeah, this, uh, this outro welcome. theme is once again brought to you by Jish because he's awesome and I love him and he's a great guy. And I would love to see more work from him. So keep, please keep making stuff, Jish. Anyway, thank you guys for joining me. Thank you, Adam, for having me. Ciao. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Hey! Can I stop recording? Watch out!